They're different religions. I think that Jesus was just a good man. Just a good man that came along. Are y'all with me? And they, they, they think he was just a good man, just another man. And matter of fact, they don't believe in the resurrection of the man. They just believe he was another man that came along. But I come to tell you today, I believe all of it. I believe all of him. I believe that Jesus, come on here somebody, was the only begotten son of God. I believe that he lived. Come on. I believe that he suffered. I believe that he shed his blood. Yeah, I wish I had some help in here. I believe that that blood is so strong that it reaches to the highest mountain and flows through the lowest valley. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe that he gave his life. I believe that he was buried, went in a tomb. Y'all ain't helping me. And three days later, got up again with all power in his head. I believe it. I just need to know, are there some other folk in here that believe it, that believe? Do I have any believers in here? Somebody might say, why do you believe it like that? I believe it like that because not only did I hear it, not only did I read it, but I experienced it. Nothing like somebody that's experienced this thing. I heard he was a healer, but then he healed me. I heard he was a way maker, but then he made a way for me. I heard he would bring you out, but then he brought me. Y'all ain't helping me. I heard he would supply all of our needs, and then he supplied my needs. I'm a believer. praise position stand to your feet and let's glorify the name of the Lord in this place hallelujah bless your name Jesus hallelujah hallelujah I come to give him a high praise how about you hallelujah he's the king of kings the Lord of lords and we love him on today and we glorify his name hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah, we love you. We love you. Come on, let's magnify him in this place. Hallelujah. We glorify your name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is high above the heavens. Glory above, the nations. And glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nations. And glory above we sing the Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. And His glory above the nations. Give God the highest praise, acknowledging Him always, and all the people say hallelujah, 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 oh yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, come on, we want to celebrate Him this morning, the Lord is high above the heavens, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, and His glory above the nation, celebrate on this morning how about you yeah the lord is high above the heavens the lord is high above the heavens yeah hallelujah and this glory above the nations hallelujah hallelujah we bless your name give god the highest praise and acknowledging him always and all the people say hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah
Jesus. He's the worthy of all the praise. Come on and magnify him in this place. Hallelujah. He's the worthy. He's the worthy. He's the worthy. He's the worthy. He woke us up this morning. We got to give the praise. Hey. Say holla. Lord, how about you? Oh, we magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 At this time, we're preparing for our corporate prayer. If you're able to come to the altar, we invite you to the altar at this time. Amen. Amen. As we give God all the glory, we give him all the honor that's due unto him this day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. I shall have. I shall have. What I decree. What I decree. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. This morning, we're remembering in prayer our sick and shut-in, our church family that are in nursing homes, all of our bereaved families, our senior saints who are unable to attend the services. Let's embrace them with love, prayers, and support. This morning, we are praying and anticipating miracles, signs, and wonders in the kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We love him. We magnify his name. This morning, we're continuing, continuing in prayer for Brother Nicholas Green, who was admitted in Bethesda North Hospital. The update is he's resting and doing better. He's breathing on his own. He's up walking and has been taking off all the machines, hallelujah, hallelujah. and medicines. To God be the glory. We're gonna keep on praying for Brother Nicholas. We're also praying for Brother Paul and Sister Daphne Hampton, the arrangements for her, his brother, Dennis Hampton. He transitioned and they follow this Friday, November the 4th, 2022. The visitation is at 11 a.m. and the services will begin at 12 noon. A Greater Friendship, Church of God in Christ in Hamilton, Ohio. We're continuing to pray in comfort and strength of the Lord to embrace his family. We're praying for Sister Carmella and Brother Kendall Chapel and their family. His, her great nephew, three years old, he passed away due to gun violence on this week. We're praying for his mother, Johnny Mae Martin. She has buried children and now a grandchild. Please pray to, for comfort, strength, and peace of the Lord to embrace the entire family. Amen. And we're praying for each and every one that is in the sanctuary on today. And all of you who have tuned in, hallelujah, to this service on today. We know God is going to move in a spectacular way. Miracles, signs, and wonders. At this time, Sister Courtney Dobbins will take us to the throne of grace. Amen. Amen. Oh God, we thank
thank you today, oh God. God, we thank you just for another day. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for another opportunity to assemble ourselves in the house of the Lord. God, we thank you, oh God, most of all, oh God, just for touching us, oh God, and breathing life into our bodies. Oh God, we thank you for life. Oh God, we thank you for strength, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for keeping us in our right minds, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for yet another youth Sunday. Oh God, we thank you, oh God, for bringing the babies and the youth in, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask you, oh God, to touch these grieving families right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to give them strength, oh God, where they need strength, oh God. God, we ask you to give them peace where they need peace, oh God. God, we ask you, oh God, to touch these bodies, oh God, of our youth, oh God. We we bind every spirit of anxiety. We bind every spirit of depression. We bind every spirit of premature death right now in the name of Jesus. For they shall live and they shall live prosperous lives. In the name of Jesus, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And they shall do the work of the Lord. Such as your word says, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over the schools. We plead the blood of Jesus over the daycares. We plead the blood of Jesus on the buses. We plead the blood of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we ask you, oh God, to have your way today, oh God. Move how you desire to move, oh God. Save how you desire to save, oh God. Oh God, deliver how you desire to deliver, oh God. Throw your weight around in the service, oh God. Not our will, but your will be done today, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, bless the men of God. They stand here today, oh God, to bring the word, oh God. Use him, oh God, how you desire to use him, oh God. Oh God, we love you. Oh God, we thank you. This is all for you, oh God. You get the glory out of our lives. Oh God, you get the glory, oh God, out of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, go back to your seats, thanking and praising God. It is done. It is fixed. And it is so in the name of Jesus. Yes, I believe. Yes, I believe. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. I shall have. I shall have. What I decree. What I decree. Yes, I believe. Up your mouth and speak it to speak into the atmosphere. But you gotta believe it in your heart. Speak it to speak into the atmosphere. All over the house this morning, begin to speak and speak and speak and speak it to speak into. Whatever it is, just speak it, speak, speak it, speak, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it, speak it. Just open up your mouth and just open up your mouth and begin to open up your mouth and declare it.
Spirit, you say. child right now. That child is just going astray. Go ahead and speak it into the atmosphere. If you're praying right now for that business to come to fruition, speak right now. Go ahead and speak it into the atmosphere. If you're praying and asking God for healing of your body, go ahead and speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it right now into the atmosphere. No matter it is, what you're looking for, go ahead and speak it. I shall have what I decree. Yes, I believe it belongs to me. God, I thank him. He is my all in all. I thank him for just who he is. I thank him for being consistent and faithful, long-suffering and patient. Oh, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for my bishop, Bishop Bobby Hilton. Come on now. Give it up. Co-pastor V in her absence. Bishop, I thank you. Thank you, thank you for this platform. I am humbly grateful. I know what the Lord has called me to do. He's told me. He confirmed it. He continues to encourage and strengthen me along this journey. And I am grateful. Absolutely grateful. I want to acknowledge my wife and my family. Yes, yes, yes. 31 plus years, she's been by my side. We've been through the ups and downs, the highs and the lows, and I thank God for Jesus because he has brought us through it all. I admit these last 20 years have been wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not because of us. Because of him, because the God we serve, believing in his son, Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, we could not be here. We would not have this opportunity. We would not have this opportunity before you all. We would not have this opportunity to stand as witnesses as to who he is. He is a perfect and awesome and loving God. And we love him. To God be all the glory. And I want to acknowledge you all, those that are here in the auditorium and those that are watching via Roku, Facebook, Internet. I thank God for each and every one of you because you put it in your schedule to be here this morning. You pressed your way. You got up. You got dressed. You did all those things that you do to be once again in the house of worship. And I thank God for that. I thank God for all of you all. For you represent, you represent, I want you to hear this, you represent the working, the manifestation, the fruition of the five-fold ministry. Teachers, preachers, prophets, apostles, and evangelists. You are who the Lord has called. You are who the Lord has positioned. You are here because you're on divine assignment, and it was in the annuals of heaven that you should be here. So you should give yourself a hand praise. Before I go into the word, <clears throat> I want you all to know, and I'd like for you all to listen very intently. My wife said, and of course I wasn't gonna say this, but she put me out there like that. My, life, my wife said, I consecrated myself this week um, and I did. I did. There is no... When you are a believer, there is tremendous power afforded you when you separate yourself unto God. Now, we are believers. We have the confession of faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
But when you push away the things that you like to do, when you push away the, the entertainment and you push away food or you push away certain foods and you make, uh, you, you make it a, 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 an intentional endeavor to pursue God, to approach his presence, to seek him on all things. When you do that, there is not only power in that, but he meets you in that. He meets you right there. Now, sure, the body, the body wants to rebel against you. The, the word is clear. The word says there's enmity. There's conflict between the flesh and the spirit. And I want you to understand that when you separate yourself in consecration, you are denying or subjecting your flesh and you are seeking to increase your spirit. Now, in the beginning, you know, especially when, 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 when you're new at it, and I'm not new at it, there can be, there can be a struggle. Your, your flesh is going to kick against you. That is the absolute truth. But when you are determined and your mind is made up and you've done it before, and you saw the results and you realize how the Lord is blessed and how he's met you in your place of seeking him. When you realize what the word says, that, 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 that he'll send messengers to you, he'll give you a word, he'll impart and give you the downloads. When you realize the power that comes with it, then you're more in tune, more inclined to do it again and again and again. So yes, yes, I did consecrate myself unto the Lord this week. Because I wanted to be clear on what he'll have me to tell you all. I didn't want to do it in my own strength. I've learned that lesson a, a while ago. That that we do, believers, we don't do in our own strength. We do not do in our own strength. It is the Lord our God who dwells on the inside, who not only strengthens us, but who leads and guides us by his spirit. And that's what I wanted. I wanted to clearly understand what thus saith the Lord, and I wanted to be able to convey it to you zealously, boldly, confidently, what thus saith the Lord. And that's the life I seek to always live. See, I've made up my mind a long time ago, a long time ago, that I am not going to dwell on the outside no more. It's my endeavor to live on the inside. Oh, live on the inside. The Word of God tells us that, that Jesus is in God the Father, and Jesus, and we are in Jesus, and Jesus is in us. That is our confession. The Word of God tells us that he that dwells in us is greater than he that's in the world. So I stand upon the promises of God. I come before you as a vessel of the Most High God. I come before you as his channel of communication in the land. As he's downloaded to me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give to you. Is that all right? Go on and give the Lord a hand, praise. Now, I have to make this confession to you all. I want you to clearly understand. This message here surprised me. Absolutely. Because this is the second message. Actually, it's the first message. Right? This is the message that he gave me. The first message... Apparently, I came up with it, thinking that that's what he gave me. Before I went to bed last night, of course, I had a message all laid out. All laid out. Meditated on it, studied on it all week. All laid out. Bullet points, points, points. All laid out. Before, I, as I laid down in bed last night, I said, Lord, I said, if this is not the message that you'll have me to minister to your people, I said, Lord, you change it change it and he did and he did so saints of God this is the message the Lord has given me for you this is the message the Lord has downloaded for you this is not me I'm going to get out the way but this is the message the Lord has given you for us all for this time and for this season I ask that you stand to your feet as we go to before the throne of grace and we're going to go to the scriptures. Dear precious Father, we thank you and we glorify you. Father, first of all, I want to give you honor and praise because you're worthy. You are the Lord, my God, who covereth and who strengthens me. You're the Lord, our God, who met us this morning. Woke us up, Father. 
started us on our day. Father, you are faithful and just. You are sovereign, O oh God. You are perfect in all thy ways. There is no one like you. You are the only wise God. You are the only God who creates. You're the only God who gives life. You are God everlasting and there's no one like you. Father, you are an all-sufficient God. There is no lack in you, O oh God. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to come before you once again. We thank you for this opportunity to fellowship, Father, and to partake of what thus saith the Lord. Father, I decrease. I ask that you increase. Speak through me, Father. Minister through me as your vessel. Give to them, Father, what you've given to me. Father, help and allow me to make it as simple as, simple as possible, O oh God, that anyone can grasp it. And Father, even when we're away from your presence, please, Father, allow this word to resonate in our spirit. Allow it, Father, to continue to minister to us, Father, even beyond these walls. And we will be forever mindful to give you praise and honor and glory. For you are worthy, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep standing, please. We're going to go straight to the word. Second Colossians 2 and 6 says this. Second Colossians 2, 6 through 10. I'm sorry. Second Colossians 2, 6 and 7. Once again, Second Colossians 2, 6 and 7. And the word says this, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Let's go to 1 John 5 and 12 through 13. 1 John 5, 12 through 13. And the word of God says this, he who has the son has life. He who does not have the son of God does not have life. These things I've written to you who believe in the name of the son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the son of God. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. You may take your seats. In the book of 2 Chronicles, in the 25th chapter, it talks about a king. The king's name, name was Amaziah, and he was the king of Judah. He began to reign when he was 25 years old, and he reigned for a total of 29 years. Now, the Bible says that he, was, he did right in the eyes of the Lord. But he didn't do it with a perfect heart. In fact, his heart wasn't bent toward loyalty to God. The Bible goes on to talk about how, how he, had a, he had a battle, a big battle with the Edomites, the descendants of Esau. And he brought back their gods. He brought back the gods of the, the, gods of the Edomites, whom he had defeated in battle. And the Bible says that he began to bow down to them. He bowed down to them and it angered God. The Bible goes on to say that, that he was confronted by a prophet of God. A man of God confronted him on what he was doing. And the Bible is clear that this king threatened the life of this prophet. Threatened the life of this prophet. And the Bible says that he turned away from God. And ultimately, he met destruction. Ultimately, he died. He was killed. His successor, his son, Uzziah, he was 16 years old in the book of 2 Chronicles in 26. He was 16 years old when he began to reign. He reigned for 52 years. 52 years, the Bible says he reigned. And the Bible says, as long as he sought the Lord, as long as he sought the Lord, God made and allowed him to prosper. As long as he sought the Lord, God made and allowed him to prosper. The Bible goes on to say that he was, 
he was, these are my words, he was very organized. Those are my words. But the Bible says he built towers. He reinforced the city walls. He built wells in the desert. He was a very industrious individual. He was, he was gifted at what he did. The Bible paints the picture of him that he liked getting his hands in the soil. So he was a hands-on guy. If he were alive today, he would be like a structural engineer or, a, or an architect or a builder, a master builder. But these are some of the things that he, that, that, that he constructed, and he was very, very good at it. But the Bible says, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted. It was lifted up toward destruction. He transgressed God. He entered the temple to burn incense. Now, this was a job exclusively for the Levites, the sons of Aaron. This is the job that they did. No one else was allowed to do this. No one else had the sanctification to be able to do this. And he, because now his heart was lifted up, he decided to go into the temple and do this himself. And the Bible says that, that the priest confronted him. In fact, he became angry with the priest. And as a result, he began to turn, he began to turn away in leprosy. Leprosy began to spread throughout his entire body. And as a result, he was separated. He had to live separate from the rest of his, his, his kingdom. Saints of God, this is a lesson. This is a, a lesson how two individuals, a dad and then a son, started out doing what is right. Started out walking with the Lord but somehow decided to turn. We see the dad began to turn in idolatry. He turned because he became distracted. His focus left the Lord our God and became focused on other things, things that he felt were more important, things that he felt were more important. And when a man of God was sent, when a messenger was sent, when a channel of communication was sent, to correct his actions, he threatened that vessel of God's life. Threatened his life. Now, you would think that the son benefiting from, the, from being in the presence of his father would, would, would not make the same mistakes. Not make the same mistakes. So he too started out with the Lord, doing all that he was supposed to do. But the Bible was clear. It told us that he too, once he established and did all these things, once he did all these things in the land, and I'm sure doing all these things in the land, he received accolades. I'm sure that as he built the towers and, and as he dug the wells in remote places, I'm sure as he fortified the city, I'm sure there were those who just heralded at who he was and, 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 and gave him accolades and, and, and boosted him up. So he began to feel that thing. That spirit of pride began to sink in. And the Bible says that he lifted, when he became strong, he lifted up himself. And he too rebelled against the Lord. Saints of God, you need to understand that, that, that the Bible is very clear. The Bible tells us that we should be vigilant. That we need to watch as well as pray. Watch as well as pray. And those things that the Lord has assigned to us, we need to ensure that we do. But see, it's one thing to start the race, but you want to finish the race. Come on now. You want to finish the race. That perfect work that he started in you, you want to see it to completion. Destruction came about. And what is destruction? Destruction. The dictionary says that destruction is an action or process of causing so much damage that it no longer exists. It says the cause of someone's ruin. It was the ruin of this dad and his successor, his son. It was the ruin of them. If I had to choose a title for this message, and I did not choose this title. The Lord says, tell them 
It's the destruction of the temple. The destruction of the temple. The destruction of the temple. Saints of God, listen to what the word of God says. This is 1 Corinthians 6 and 15. 1 Corinthians 6 and 15 through 20 says this. Do you know that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you know that he who, he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one with him. One spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside of the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Saints of God, you have been bought with a price. You no longer belong to yourselves. You belong to God. And because of your confession of faith, because of your stand, because of your proclamation, he has indwelled you with his precious spirit. And when you commit a sin against your body, you've committed a sin against that temple. You have committed a sin against that temple. And I realize that you all are, 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 are quiet. I realize that, 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 that this message is, 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 is a heavy message. But it's a message the Lord our God sent for me to tell you all. And you need to know what the Lord is saying. So I am here to proclaim what thus saith the Lord. Whether you clap or not, whether you shout or not, it's okay. Because it's not unto me. It's unto the Lord our God. And I, it is my prayer that even when you leave this place, that this message will resonate. It will resonate in your spirit. And it's my hopes that you'll minister it to somebody. My hopes that you'll revisit this message and you'll say, what did he say now? What did he say? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's go to Facebook. Let's go to Word of Deliverance Ministries. I come and let's see what the Lord has said because this is what the Lord is saying, saints of God. This is what he's saying unto his people. He says in 2 Corinthians 6, 16 through 18. This is what the Lord our God is saying. He says... And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I dwell in them and I walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch that which is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Hear what the Lord is saying, saints. Hear what the Lord is saying. He's brought you from over there. And he's taking you over here. Jesus is the bridge. He is the bridge from over there to over here. The Lord our God wants you to live a life that is completely submitted unto him. He wants you to do as he's called you to do. He says, I am a jealous God. He says, I will not share you with anyone. He says, you belong to me and I belong to you. There is no compromise. You can't dwell in two places at the same time. You can't live in two neighborhoods at the same time. You can't live in two regions at the same time. You can't live in two states at the same time. So why are you trying to compromise who the Lord our God has called you to be? 
He says, I've delivered you from over there to over here. I brought you from slavery into freedom. You are no longer captive to sin. You have been delivered and set free. He says that the tricks of the enemy are condemnation. They are shame and they are guilt. These are not of God. These are not of God. That was your past. This is your present. This is your future moving forward. Hear what the Lord our God is saying, saints. Move from over there to over here. You've walked across that bridge. Stay on this side. There is no reason, none, for you to go back. To go back is death. To go back is wrath. To go back is either one or the both. Wrath and death. Wrath that ends in death. Stay over here. And now that you're here, move. Move. This is the five-fold ministry. There are preachers, teachers, evangelists, prophets, apostles in the house. Move. Everyone. Everyone who confesses Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Everyone is going to have a word. Everyone is a minister. Everyone is able to evangelize, to speak the good news, to speak the good news of Jesus Christ, that we are no longer in bondage. We are no longer yoked with a yoke of sin. The word says, whom, whom the Lord has made free is free indeed. He took captivity captive. Let me share this with you, saints. The Bible tells us in our studies that Satan did not want Jesus to reach the full fruition of his ministry. We know that he tried to kill him as a child. Amen? Amen? And the Lord said, get out of this country. You go down to Egypt. He went down to Egypt and found refuge there for a season. And when it was okay, the Lord says, okay, those who sought to kill you, they are gone. So he came back and Jesus ministered. He came back and he was perfect. He came back and he ministered. He came back and he was perfect. He was crucified, he was accused, and he was an innocent man. He was an innocent man. The Bible makes it very clear that the people at the time preferred a robber, a rebel, they preferred his freedom than the freedom of a savior. They said, his blood will be on our heads. His blood will be on the heads of our children. That's what the Bible says. They said, give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. That's what the word says. Give us Barabbas. The Bible says that Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate was an educated man. He was very astute in Hebrew doctrine. The Bible says that Pontius Pilate had tried three times, three times to free Jesus, three times. But the people in the land preferred the rebel and the robber, the one who was rebellious, the one who was a murderer, the one who had blood all over his hands. And the Bible says that Pontius Pilate washed his hands of the matter, washed his hands of the matter, and they crucified him. When Jesus died on the cross, we were set free. We were set free. We're no longer aliens, no longer alienated from the Lord our God. Delivered, delivered from captivity, delivered from the yoke of sin. But here's what I want you to understand, saints, that the enemy realized, he knew, he knew that the clock was ticking. He knew what the clock was ticking. But what he did not know as Jesus died, what he did not know, saints, he did not know that he was going to get up. He did not know that he was going to get up. The Bible tells us on the third day, he got up. He got up. And when he got up, the enemy knew, the enemy knew that it was over. It was over. It was in game. The victory is ours. We win. We win now and we win in the next. We win now, and we win in the next. We win now, and we win in the next. Oh, death, where is thy sting? 
Oh, grave, where is thy victory? He got up. He got up. So, saints, I want you to know this. Satan took his eyes off of Christ. And he placed them on you. He says, I couldn't get the head, but I'm going after the body now. I'm going after the body. So the Lord, my God, sent me to tell you, saints of God, that whatever you're doing, that's not like him. Stop doing. Stop doing. Stop doing. If you're doing anything in your flesh, if you're doing anything to your flesh, stop doing it. Stop doing it. If your focus isn't upon him and him exclusively, stop doing it. Stop doing it. Bishop said last week, he said, listen, he said, I like football. And I was over there saying, I was over there, too. I was like, yeah, yeah, I like football too, yeah. And Bishop said, but that's secondary, third year, that, that ain't even, it ain't even an issue. What I do, I do unto the Lord. What we do, we do unto the Lord. He's first and foremost. First and foremost. I like sports, I do. But not at the expense of my life or my relationship with the Lord my God. I got to serve him first and foremost. There is nothing more important to me than him. I love him. I absolutely, I absolutely love him. And as we press into him, as we press into him, as we hunger and thirst after him, as we, fo as we follow that attraction to him, we have less attraction for the enemy. Less attraction for the enemy. But you have to be, you have to be intentional about this, saints. It ain't an automatic thing. Oh, you got to do some work now. The Bible tells us faith without works, what? Faith without works is what? Faith without works is what? You got to put it in motion. You got to put it in motion. The enemy knows that his time is short. He knows he's already lost. He knows the victory has already been won. So, saints of God, the Lord wants me to tell you this. You don't have to struggle no more. No more. The enemy seeks to, he seeks to sow and tell you over and over that you're condemned, that you're guilty, and that you're shameful. The devil is a liar. He is a liar. The Bible says he's a liar and a murderer. He was that from the beginning. Saints of God, realize Stand up, not physically. Stand up in your spirit and realize who you are in the Lord. Jesus has paved a way for us. He's left footprints for us. All you got to do is walk in his steps. Walk in his steps. Walk in his steps. When you do that, he's going to be there with you. He wants you to see things through his eyes. He says, daughter, my son, come up here. I want you to see this. I want you to see what's going on in the land. I want you to see what's going on in the land. He says, how is it that you can, can, you can discern the weather, but you can't discern the times? You can discern the weather, but you cannot discern the times. Saints, we are living in the last days. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. He's on his way back. He sent me to tell you that whatever you are doing in your flesh, stop doing it. Whatever you're doing that distracts you away from him, stop doing it. Draw nigh. Young people, draw nigh now. Draw nigh, draw nigh now, young people. Draw nigh now, old people, older people. The time is now. The time is now. I want to encourage you as I get ready to close. I want you to know this. You don't have to struggle, saints of God. The word tells me that Jesus overcame the world. 
He overcame the world. As he overcame the world, he conquered it. He dominated. He won. He won. He says you win too. He says the enemy wants to blind you. The enemy wants to talk to you when you should not allow him to talk. Eve should have told that serpent, kick rocks. She should have told him, get thee behind me. She should have told him to leave and leave now. The Bible says if you resist the devil, that he will flee. Learn to resist the devil. Learn to resist when he tries to say that, you're, that, that, you're, that you are guilty. When he tries to condemn you. When he tries to take you down that path of being shameful. The Bible says old things have passed away. All things are made new. We all have a past, saints of God. We all have a past. The word of God says we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have a past. But we don't have to dwell there, Sister Johnny. No more. No more. No more, Mother Lemons. No more. We can't dwell in two places. So you got to make your mind up. You got to make a conscientious choice. You got to make your mind up. You should make it up today. Make it up today. And this is what the Lord our God says to those who are wondering, well, when, Lord? When, Lord? What about me? When, Lord? What about me? This is what he says. He says in the book of Joshua 3 and 7, he says this. And the Lord, and the Lord God said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. It's the Lord who exalts. It is the Lord our God who promotes. This is what he goes on to say in Joshua 4 and 14. He says, on that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel, and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. Saints of God, it is the Lord our God who promotes us. If our focus is upon him, if our focus is upon him, and we're looking and seeking from him, he is a supplier of our each and every need. Our each and every need. Our each and every need. Not just, not, not just in the, within the walls of the church, but out in the world as well. It is the Lord our God who promotes us in all things. When you place your trust and expectation on him, it is he that will answer. The Lord says you should place your expectancy in him. Place your expectancy in him. And he will. He will exalt you in due season. He will exalt you in due season. As I close, 1 Peter 5 and 6 through 7 says this. It says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. The Lord our God desires that no one is lost. The Lord our God desires that all should be saved. Saints of God, this is a walk. This is a journey that we can take together. We can take this journey together. My encouragement to you is to seek the Lord while he can be found. My encouragement to you is find him while he is near. My encouragement to you, go after him while it is daylight. My encouragement to you, no man can work while it's dark. Saints of God, be encouraged. Be encouraged. The Lord our God loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He sent me to tell you that, that he loves you. No longer listen to that enemy. Don't you listen to the enemy. Shame and guilt and condemnation is not of God. It is not of God. It is not of God. Give the Lord a hand praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There may be someone in need of prayer. There may be someone who doesn't know the Lord, our God. There may be someone who wants to to, to be prayed for, who needs or who feels something that, that they're not used to feeling. Someone who, who feels that, that, that perhaps during this time there's, there's a, they're overwhelmed or, or, or they're carrying a burden. I ask you 
for those who need prayer to come to the altar. Those who need prayer, I ask that you come to the altar. Those who don't know, know Jesus, I ask that you come to my left, to your right. Those in need of prayer, come to my right, your left. For the Lord our God desires that no one is lost. He says, as he overcame the world, you shall too. We overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. The accuser of the brethren is Satan. The Bible says that he accuses the brethren day and night in the presence of God. When he finds you on his turf, on the other side, he accuses you before God. He feels that he has legitimate reason, legitimate reason to you. But the Lord our God says, not so. They belong to me. Not so. They belong to me. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this house. Amen. And while those are on the altar, we ask you to just stretch your hands this way as we touch and agree with them on the altar. That all of their needs may be met this morning. Hallelujah. No one can, will go out that door the same way that they came in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank God for his word on today. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is a new day. It's a new season. A fresh anointing is flowing our way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a season of power and, and authority. It's a new season. It's a new season coming, coming to me. Oh, it's a new season. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new day. A fresh anointing. A fresh anointing. It's flowing my way. Flowing my way. It's a season of power. Prosperity. prosperity, oh, it's a new, it's a new season, and it's coming. to this morning. We thank you for his strength today. Thank you, Jesus. Healing, deliverance right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for restoration. I'm up. Oh, it's flowing, it's flowing. 
cannot operate like we just another business in the city. We got to operate like we prayer warriors, seeking God, praying in good times and bad times, praying in come on in good days and bad days, praying when we see the light and praying in darkness, praying like we got experience and we know what prayer will do. Some of us have prayed before and we've seen God work things out before. We've seen God bring us out before. We've seen God heal us before. I've seen God do it. Don't try to shut me down now. I got to pray for somebody that don't know what to do. Jesus. We got to do. We got to do like we got experience. We got to do like we heard a war cry. Ought to be some church folk here to war cry. It's time for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ to hear a war cry. It's time to pray now. It's time to declare that we need the power of God to move in the land. If nobody can heal, my God can heal. I've seen God do it. Let me tell you something. Don't you stop praying now. There's a name, there's a name, there's a name, there's a name that is above every name. I God, my God, the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall bow. I dare you to shout, Jesus. 